Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC, the Sids Blue Lines TV. Welcome to the match review of our 3-0 win over Batse Borisov. Ruben Loftus-Cheek with the hat-trick tonight. Incredible performance by him and I'm really looking forward to talking about him later on during this match review. But you guys, before I get into things, please, in the description below, Download the one football link, you guys. You actually have to click on that link in the description below because every time you do that, each download does get dragged. And of course, the more downloads I get dragged, obviously the higher chance I have of getting another potential deal. So if you guys like the content and like what I do, help support me and please click on the link in the description below. But moving on to things now and starting with the lineup. And honestly, I was thinking, you know what? This might be the first time I might actually predict the lineup this season. I was close. I think the only surprise in the team was that Kovacic did play over Ross Barkley. I think all of us were hoping to see Ross and Ruben playing together. But what was interesting was the fact that Ruben did play on the left and Kovacic should play on the right-hand side. In a sense, it does make more sense because, you know, Kovacic is very good defensively. He likes to tackle as well. And Ruben off the streak is more offensive playing in a number eight position. Now, I'm going to do things a bit differently with today's match review. I'm going to start off by talking about the tactics in the game because really there isn't much to talk about and I do want to get this part out of the way so I can focus my thoughts on other players. Now Batse Borisov did use a 4-3-3 in today's game but that's when they're off the ball they did revert back to using a 4-1-4-1, obviously a 4-5-1 in midfield. And the massive mistake they made was that they didn't press us whatsoever. You know, they kept allowing us to play in front of them. We could do whatever we wanted in midfield. You know, our midfield players weren't getting pressed or closed down. Fabregas was dictating and running things. Loftus-Cheek and Kovacic had so much space in the lines to play and in the half spaces. And our midfield could pass and run wherever they wanted to. And honestly, it was really easy to bypass them and create chances against them. You know, I was telling you guys the fact that they're very susceptible to pressure out wide. And I was saying that, you know, if the wingers aren't tracking back to help the fullbacks, expect there to be a lot of overloads. And you know what? We had one big tactical advantage in this game. And that was that main guy, Olivia Giroud. Now, with Giroud playing as a target man, this forces the Batty Boris of players to have to actually pay attention to him and man mark him. And by doing that, when you put a man on Giroud, you're taking someone else out from the team, meaning that there's more spaces for our guys to play in. And, and with Olivia Giroud occupying the Batty Boris of defence, this allowed guys like Ruben and Kovacic to have so much time and space between the lines and in the half space. And this was why Ruben was so fantastic in particular in this game tonight. And because guys like Ruben and Kovacic were able to operate between the lines and in the half space, this meant that our fullbacks were able to make constant overlapping runs whenever they wanted to. And the moment when they started to stretch the play with the overlapping runs, it meant that Batty Borisov defence was disjointed. It meant that they had to leave their positions, occupy spaces that had been left untended. And by doing that, it's only a ticking time bomb in terms of the fact that, you know, we are going to create chances against you and we are going to get goals. And all the goals came today for my hat-trick hero, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now, you know what? I'll agree with some of the cynics that will obviously be here tonight. It's only Batse Borisov. You know, of course, Nina, you're saying it yourself. They didn't press on midfield. It was very easy for Ruben to play tonight. And you guys, you are correct. It was very easy. But Ruben showed just how dangerous he is as a player if you afford to give him time and space on the ball. And honestly, with this game, it's possibly the most perfect game that Loftus Cheek could possibly imagine he could have because. In this game today, he really showed every side of his game. He showed his tackling. He showed that he was willing to press as well. Of course, there were times when Sari is giving him tactical instructions, but I've said it to you guys before. Over the past few years, Loftus-Cheek hasn't been playing in midfield, so it's completely understandable. You know, the guy's been playing out wide for Palace. He's been playing as a number 10, a winger, and a striker under Conte as well. So it's natural that He's not going to be as sophisticated tactically playing in midfield. But to help him get over that, you need to play him more. Game time is the only thing you can do. But getting back to Ruben's performance, and as I was saying, he was really just demonstrating every side to his game. Obviously, the pressing I was talking about earlier, his runs in behind as well. Ruben's always had this ability where he can time his run and he does know how to make those late man runs as well. He was constantly in dangerous positions. Ruben showed his spatial awareness. How many times was he receiving the ball in the half turn or receiving the ball turning and driving through the opposition? Now, that's not just out of luck. 
that's Ruben off the street, understanding the time and space he has. And obviously, he has that confidence as well to express his talent. Ruben showed just how intelligent and dangerous he is playing, you know, in the half space and playing between the lines and playing further up. You know, the amount of intelligent positions he took up that allowed guys like Emerson to bomb forwards. And the amount of times he picked the right time to actually, you know, run into the box and drive at the Bate Boris of players. And, you know, the guy was showing class, technique and skill. And the hat-trick he scored tonight was a very, very good hat-trick. I mean, the first goal really demonstrating his ability to time his run. Second goal being that presence from set pieces as well. And the third goal as well. Fantastic outside of the boot shot, going to the bottom right corner. And just look at how he plays the game. You can see the elegance with his runs and how he uses the ball in his first touch. We've got a massive talent on our hands here. And, you know, I'm going to be talking about this tomorrow in tomorrow's five talking points video. But I think that Ruben's really demonstrated why he should be taken serious, why he does deserve more game time. And hopefully this performance tonight is really going to, you know, awaken Sari and really start to give Sari the the faith to start using Loftus-Cheek more. It brings a very interesting question. I mean, Kovacic is a fantastic player. Let's not forget that. But offensively, he does lack at times. We all know this. You know, we don't see him really make so many, you know, late man runs inside the box or really get into the opposition box as much. You know, Ruben showed that he can do all sides of the game. And honestly, if you were a neutral that had never seen a Chelsea game in your life and this was your first game you were watching, you probably wouldn't have guessed that, you know, Kovacic was the guy that came from Real Madrid and has been playing way more than Loftus-Cheek. So it shows you the guy's talent and, you know, it's about time that Chelsea just repay Loftus-Cheek for his commitment and his work rate and start giving this guy more opportunities. Now, you know, that's enough of me praising Loftus-Cheek. There were some other very good performances as well. I have to talk about our fullbacks and Emerson and Zappa Costa. You guys, I'll let you know tomorrow why uh, Emerson's been having some issues uh uh, at Chelsea so far so you guys will hear that tomorrow in tomorrow's five talking points video but they really showed what our first team fullbacks do lack at times and you guys I'm always saying this point every single time but it's the ability to take responsibility in the final third that ability to attack the spaces to carry the ball when you need to it, it, it makes a massive difference offensively you know with uh, Alonso he's improved this season no doubts about that but at the same time, you know, his play when it comes to his build-up isn't as effective all the time. With Aspi Laqueta, he's been very quiet and very human. He's not looking as superhuman as he normally does. And Zappa Costa, I mean, yes, of course, Bate Boris a very easy opposition. And unfortunately with Zappa Costa, even though he was good today from an offensive standpoint, I mean, the guy's ability in keeping the ball and defending as well isn't as good. And I'm sure if he was performing well and training in those areas... Sorry, might be using him a bit more. But uh, again, you know, I definitely think that Emerson and Zappa Costa showed us what we're missing from an offensive standpoint with our first team fullbacks. But at the same time, you know, these guys are getting, they're getting minimal minutes. And, you know, so putting these performances shows you that they are hungry. They do actually want to try and get more opportunities. And, you know, they did well uh, for tonight. Now, Sari does bring on Moses. And I think all of us had like a collective sigh, like, why are you bringing on Moses? Because I think we all assume that that meant that Hudson Odoi wouldn't be playing because I think we guessed that either Kanzi or Morata will get game time tonight. But I mean, not too long after that, Sari does bring on Hudson Odoi. He does come off for Pedro. And um, Hudson Odoi showed that, you know, this is a guy that does need more game time now. I think Hudson himself will be frustrated at the fact that maybe he's not really testing the goal as much, given the you know, small amount of time he's had, but he's showed his ability. Look at the first touch control, his ability to beat a man, cut inside. He's just extremely confident on the board as well. And let's be serious, you're looking at Sancho during his time at Dortmund now. He started a lot of games from the sub bench and really coming on later on as the games are going on. He's only now starting to show that, yes, he can get goals as well. So it does take time and it shows that, you know, you, you have to afford him the opportunity to grow and get that confidence in front of goal because in terms of his ability, the pace, the skill, the first touch of control, you know, the more time he plays, uh, the better he's going to get used to things. And, you know, it's natural at times that he's going to show his youth, uh, his youthful exuberance. You know, it, it's natural, you know. He wants to impress. He wants to show that uh, what he can do. You know, finally getting game time. But I think he showed that he's got the ability. He can provide something dangerous. And Sari should really consider that, you know what? 
maybe I need to start taking Hudson Adoy a bit more seriously. Now, Basse Borisov did score a goal, and uh, you know, before that, of course, Kepa making a fantastic reflex save, even though the effort was offside. But uh, the guy's a top keeper. I think we all know that. I think we can all see that already. But uh, with Basse Borisov, unfortunately, we weren't able to keep that clean sheet. I looked at the goal quite a lot, and um, it brings up interesting questions in regards to our zonal marking style. Now, it's something I've been thinking about quite a lot, and uh, you know, think about it like this it makes quite a lot of sense why Sari is going to be using a zonal marking system compared to a man marking system. Number one, it's not as if we're blessed with tons of six foot plus players. We're not a very physical team. So I expect the fact that if we did use a man marking style, we'd probably concede way more goals from set pieces and we look much more susceptible from set pieces. And to counter that, it's basically like, uh, you know, the best of two evils, you know, the, the zonal style makes more sense for the team. Of course, naturally, we will concede at times, but it's the best thing we can do at this moment in time. I mean, the only way to really rectify that is by signing lots of giants for the team. But I think we're trying to move away from that. We want to try and play a much more attacking technical style. So it is what it is. And to be honest, I do have to give credit for that delivery inside the box. I mean, it literally took every single person out. And I think that if that was a De Bruyne, for example, People, did it. People wouldn't be criticising us that much for conceding that effort. But really tonight, Sorry got everything spot on. I mean, it's one of the games that a lot of us fans have been waiting for in the sense that let's see what the young guys can do. I think Sorry gave them a lot of game time. It's great that Ruben completed a full 90 minutes. It's great that hudson Adoy got 30 minutes as well. Shame that Ampadu's out. He could have been playing today. Christensen showed what he can do, but it's not as if he was really tested. And really, you know, Sarri did all the right things because last time he really did pay the price for using a strong team against Villiaton. I mean, obviously got that draw against West Ham, but playing against Burnley later this week. So it's best that our best players are rested and fully good. And, you know, it's good to see that Sarri can actually rely more on the squad players because there are goal threats on the guys we have. I mean, for Loftus-Cheek to get a hat-trick is incredible. But you guys, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to go. As I said, if you want to support me and support the content I release for you, please, in the description below, click on the link to download the One Football app. Every download makes a big difference. Thank you for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.